Hey there, fellow adventurers and gig drivers. It's Steve here from the Penny Stupid Project, ready to take you on another journey through the latest and greatest news. You might have seen the headlines that in Massachusetts, Uber and Lyft drivers are going to make $32.50 an hour. But in this video, I'm going to get into the fine details and information you haven't heard. So keep watching because this is one ride you don't want to miss. All right, let's get into the details. The Massachusetts Attorney General has just a landmark settlement with Uber and Lyft. This agreement is a game changer for thousands of drivers across the state. Here's what you need to know. Imagine earning a guaranteed minimum wage, getting paid sick leave, and having access to health insurance just for driving. Now, that sounds too good to be true. Well, well it's kind of happening in Massachusetts right now. First up, let's talk about minimum pay. Uber and Lyft drivers will now earn at least $32.50 per hour of active time. That's while they're picking up or transporting riders. That's right, $32.50 per hour adjusted annually for inflation. This is a huge win for drivers who often struggle to make ends meet. But that's not all. The settlement also includes paid sick leave. Drivers will earn one hour of sick pay for every 30 hours worked, up to 40 hours per year. Uber and Lyft are required to update their apps so drivers can easily view and claim their sick leave. And it gets even potentially better. For the first time, drivers can pool their hours driving for both companies to qualify for a health insurance stipend. If you drive more than 15 hours a week, you get a stipend to help pay for your health insurance. If you drive more than 25 hours, that stipend doubles. But wait, there's still more. This settlement isn't just about money, it's also about rights and protections that drivers have wanted and deserved for a long time. Drivers will also get occupational accident insurance up to a million dollars in coverage for work-related injuries. Plus, they'll have access to paid family and medical leave. Uber and Lyft must ensure timely payment of earnings and provide clear, detailed information about each trip and earnings. However, it's important to note that this accident insurance doesn't cover everything. It will not cover accidents that occur while the driver is online, but outside of engaged time. If the driver is engaged on another company's app or engaged in personal activities, which make them unavailable to accept a ride. Discrimination and retaliation have also been addressed. The companies can't discriminate based on race, religion, gender, or any other protected characteristic, and they can't retaliate against drivers who file complaints or seek their rightful benefits. Want to know more about how much Uber and Lyft are paying? Really? In this settlement? Well, stay tuned because the numbers might surprise you. Uber will pay $148 million and Lyft will pay $27 million, making a combined total of $175 million. Most of this money will go directly to current and former drivers who were underpaid. Now let's get into the nitty gritty, break this all down on how this will work. Uber and Lyft must ensure drivers receive no less than $32.50. Number one, minimum driver pay. By August 15, 2024, Uber and Lyft must ensure drivers receive no less than $32.50 per hour of time spent driving or picking up items for either company. This rate will increase annually based on inflation. Number two, paid sick leave. Starting November 1st, 2024, drivers earn one hour of sick pay for every 30 hours worked, up to 40 hours per year. Sick leave accrues after 90 hours of engaged time and can be used in one hour increments. Number three, occupational accident insurance. By October 1st, 2024, Uber and Lyft will provide up to $1 million in coverage for work-related injuries. This includes medical expenses, disability payments, and accidental death benefits. However, it does not cover accidents that occur while online but outside of engaged time if the driver is engaged on another company's app or in personal activities. Number four, portable health fund. By March 1st, 2025, a neutral third-party administrator will manage a health fund. Drivers averaging 15 to 25 hours of engaged time per week are eligible for health stipends covering up to 50% of health care plan contributions. Drivers averaging 25 or more hours are eligible for 100% stipend. However, 
It's important to note that the exact amount of the health insurance stipend is not specified in the agreement. It might be very little, as there's no minimum requirement set for the stipend amount. Number five, timely payment of earnings. Earnings must be paid weekly or biweekly, no later than six days after the end of the period. Deactivated drivers must receive unpaid earnings promptly. Number six, anti-retaliation and anti-discrimination policies. Uber and Lyft cannot retaliate against drivers who cooperate with the Attorney General or seek benefits under the settlement. The companies must not discriminate based on any protected characteristics. And there's more. The companies will contribute half the independent contractor rate for paid family medical leave, which is currently 0.44% of earnings, excluding tips. This means Uber and Lyft will contribute 0.22% of every dollar you earn excluding tips. For example, if you earn $1,000, the companies will contribute only $2.20 towards paid family medical leave. And here's how tips will be handled. Tips are not included in the calculation of earnings. So for determining minimum pay, sick leave, or health insurance stipends, this means tips are additional income that drivers get to keep 100% of without any deductions or contributions taken from them. Now let's talk about why these changes are so important. In the past, Uber and Lyft have not guaranteed that drivers will make minimum wage. Drivers weren't reimbursed for business expenses like gas, vehicle maintenance, and insurance. They also didn't get paid for the time spent waiting or driving between rides. This meant that many drivers were earning far less than the minimum wage after expenses were deducted. This settlement aims to address these issues, kind of, by ensuring a minimum hourly wage, providing sick leave, and offering stipends for health insurance. Drivers will have more financial stability and support or at least it seems that way. One thing to note is that drivers are still considered independent contractors under this settlement. This means they remain responsible for their own taxes and business expenses. While the settlement provides many new benefits, drivers still need to manage their own independent contractor obligations and payment of taxes. This settlement is a monumental step forward ensuring fair treatment and compensation for Uber and Lyft drivers. While it might seem fantastic at first glance, remember, the devil is always in the details. Time will tell what the knock-on effects of this settlement will be and how Uber and Lyft might attempt to make up for these new obligations from drivers. Will they raise fares? Will they cut back on bonuses or promotions? Only time will tell. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more updates on how this settlement impacts you and other drivers. And don't forget, Share this video with anyone who needs to know about these important changes. Until next time, stay safe and keep driving forward. This is Steve from the Penny Stupid Project.